going back to the same example that uh, I was using for the students, you can just tell the uh, tell inform the AI that this is my life journey, this is my history, you know, this is where I come from, this is my background, and these are some of the options that I'm looking at. You know, wh what are your thoughts? And uh, in order for a human to understand it, it will take uh, you know uh, hours and hours of sort of getting getting to know you. But with a super intelligent being, it can actually look at your journey and it can actually start to give you very intelligent answers that you know maybe you should try this maybe you should try that and then the other uh, the next step is uh, we 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 can even get this kind of advice from other human beings but then we get stuck on okay you know what is my next step um, you know how do i get there so again, AI can help you and it, it, you can start to brainstorm with AI and say, okay, uh, you know, what is my first step? What could be the, my next step? What is the easiest one thing I can do to, you know, uh, to uh, move forward in that direction? Hello and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by a fabulous Canadian guest. His name is Man Manuj. Agawal. That's, that's spelled it the right way, is I hope. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Oh, great. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, and no, I'm really looking forward to talking today. Um, for those of you who don't know who Manoush is, Manoush is actually a global leader in AI. Um, his little tagline is, is backed by science and AI. And he was just sharing with me his story just before he came on the podcast. And it's a really interesting one because he's originally from India. He's now living in Canada. And at 15 years old, he was working in a factory. So I'm going to hand the floor over to Manoush. Now you can tell us a little bit about your story and how you got to being where you are now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in a very small town in India and uh, India was a, obviously a developing country back then, the 30 years ago. And uh, it still is in many respects. And in that uh, time, uh, you know, in a small town, there was not many opportunities uh, for higher education, for employment and things like that. So I um, started working in a factory uh, and I was making two dollars a day. Uh, I was working six days a week, 12 hours a day. And it was really hard work, uh, really hard life. And I wanted to uh, do something better with my life. Obviously, I didn't know what it could be and where to go, who to talk to. Uh, and one fine day, I was sitting uh, at lunch hour going through some business magazines. And I I saw these, uh, I read these stories of these tycoons who had made uh, a lot of progress in their life and they have changed their their uh, destiny and destiny around uh, people around them uh, by building their empire so i thought to myself you know what is different about them what what do they have that i don't have and anyway i mean that inspiration triggered something in me um, I, I even at that point i didn't know exactly what i was going to do but from that point onwards i started looking for you know my superpower or my uh, you know what what i could do with my life and uh, i found my um, myself in a computer programming course uh, 2 years later and i just fell in love with computers and technology and i knew that was i was uh, that's exactly what i was going to do and um, then uh, after programming, uh, I learned programming. I uh, got a, a job in India. After that, I moved to Canada. And uh, th that was the dot-com boom time around 1998, 99. And I got a job very quickly and uh, I stayed there for a couple of years and I made a pretty good progress in that job. But then um, uh, dot-com bust happened and I lost that job. And then I uh, lost another job because of September 11th, another job because of Gulf War. So I kept losing my job and I realized that, you know, I shouldn't really look for job security uh, irrespective of whether I'm in India or uh, Canada. So then I started my consulting company back in 2001, and I started working with a lot of startups, helping them build their technology, build uh, technology products, um, and bring them uh, bring them to market. And then I also got um, uh, and I also got an opportunity to work with large corporations like Microsoft and IBM and Pearson Education. And for these corporations, I built global systems. So Microsoft, we built a system for them to handle enterprise uh, clients all over the world. And that system was processing about 30, 40 billion dollars worth of transactions every year. 
uh, for Pearson Education, we built an education, um, educational uh, platform for students, and that uh, was producing about $400 million annually. And so uh, I got to see how small companies grow large and then how large corporations, they um, keep uh, dominating the market. And as I was going through all this, um, you know, I had uh, a lot of challenges with my relationships at home, with my parents, with my spouse. And so um, I, I was, uh, you know, having professional success um, in my career, but uh, struggling at home. And then I had my first born child uh, around 2010 and he won't connect with me. And that led me into depression and uh, suicidal thoughts. And um, I wanted to really fix myself because I, I knew if I give in, you know, it'll be it'll be not good for myself or my family. So I went into meditation, spirituality, and I understood how the mind works, how human psychology works, neuroscience behind it. So as I was learning about this whole concept about the mind, I also was getting heavily into artificial intelligence, building systems for uh, various various clients. And so I finally realized that our mind and artificial intelligence is basically a continuum of the same thing. You know, our mind impacts AI and AI impacts our mind. And so with that realization, I started to see, okay, you know, I was able to fix myself, my mind, come out of uh, suicidal thinking and actually grow uh, massively in my career, in my in my thinking. And how can I do that for other people? So when I talk to other people about meditation and things like that, generally I get the answer, oh, I have no time for that. And then I started thinking, okay, if you don't have time for that, maybe that's the reason why you should meditate. But... If you don't want to do that, maybe I can use technology like AI to help people uh, experience some of that meditative state. So that's that's sort of my passion. Um, but also, this has huge implications in business, in in uh, in uh, you know building a culture inside the company, in attracting the right clients, in making the clients more loyal to uh, the brand. So all of these things can be done through artificial artificial intelligence because 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 of how it impacts our mind uh, and vice versa so that is sort of the story the journey i took uh, from where i was and uh, from where i am today uh, it's, it's interesting because I usually ask people what they're most proud of, but I mean, listening to your story, obviously you've been, you know, right the way down to the to the bottom of the pit, if you like, and managed to mm -hmm. raise yourself up, which I think is is pretty inspirational. So thank you for sharing that. What are you most proud of professionally? I think uh, the most um, uh, I, I'm proud of the fact um, that my technology, the work that I have done, it has impacted over 10 million lives, and. So um, yeah, so so it has impacted them in a way that you know they are able to um, experience life uh, pain free. So we built some technology that helped uh, with joint pains, uh, uh, and you know now people using that technology can um, can uh, you know do their job without experiencing pain. We built technology to educate uh, kids in such a way that uh, you know they can uh, uh, they can get. Uh, learn from anywhere uh, we built another technology that helps college students complete their degree programs because about 30 percent of the college students they drop out of their degree programs because of mm -hmm. uh, various reasons and so uh, we implemented an ai technology which helped them you know sort of uh, which helped the universities lower that dropout rate significantly so these are the type of uh, projects that excite me because they bring about tangible change in human life, uh, quality of life. So that's that's something to be proud of, I think. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, massive impact and obviously making a huge difference. So tell me a little bit. I think it's really good to go back to basics because AI is a term that is banded around all the time. Um, and people might sort of think, well, what really is AI? So how would you describe AI? Sure. Well, um, you know, AI, as I said, is is basically an extension of our mind. So when we uh, think about our mind, uh, it's a pattern recognition uh, recognition machine. So we recognize patterns in life and then we adopt them. So I'll give you a, a quick example. So let's say a kid touches a hot stove. Um, they will realize that uh, you know it it is it feels hot and it hurts and I don't uh, want to do that again. So now uh, the kid um, has taken one data point of experience of touching the hot stove and the mind has learned that this is not a good uh, thing to do so don't do it mm -hmm. 
So that's intelligence, right? Now we put that child in Antarctica with heat resistant gloves and the, you know it's a super cold out there and now the child touches the stove it will actually flee, feel pleasant it will not feel hurtful it's it's not going to be hot so now the mind recognizes that okay you know there are multiple variables here i'm wearing the gloves it's cold outside and if in these conditions it's okay to touch the stove so there are three or four new parameters that have been learned now um, so that these are data points that m our mind learns now if we extrapolate that to some really complex problem like predicting the weather or you know finding solution for climate change or predicting the stock market there are millions and millions of parameters that our mind is not able to comprehend so even the smartest people maybe they can handle 10 or 15 variables at the same time but when we when we talk about a complex problem with many variables the machine is able to ingest millions of data points and then is able to find that minute pattern and tell us okay you know this is what's going to happen based on the data you know uh, it is going to rain in 14 days or this this um, x-ray that i'm examining it has this kind of uh, cancer or whatever it is so the machine is able to accurately predict that and humans um, human mind is not able to do that uh, so so that's that's uh, uh, artificial intelligence yeah, that's actually a really good example. Actually, I like it a lot. Okay, that's cool. And and of course, that means that it's it's um, going to be really helpful for making things that may have been sort of very long tasks before really, really super short. Um, you said you, you gave a couple of examples of how you've used it to help um, kids stay in their study. Can yeah. you give me like a, a, a little bit more depth on that one particularly? What is that, what yeah, is yeah. that all about? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. See, what happens is when uh, students, they enroll into university, they generally uh, take up courses based on recommendations of career counselors or friends or family. And at that young age, like, you know, 19 or 20, People generally don't know what they want um, and uh, what they, you know, they, they are enthusiastic as they go into the university, but as they go through the um, courses, they either get bored because uh, the, the subject is of no interest to them or it is too difficult for them. Um, so then they decide, you know, I'm just going to drop out of this university. And, uh, you know, the university loses uh, a student and the society loses a graduate, uh, uh, a potential graduate. So. What we did was we collected data from hundreds of thousands of students, their school uh, scores, their aptitude scores, their interest levels. And we created a model to understand, you know, what course suits what kind of student. And, uh, mm -hmm. and now we know as a student is trying to register into the university, we can look at their histor uh, historical data and we can say, okay, based on your data, our model is telling us that you should take these courses. So we almost recommend courses to them, just like Netflix recommends shows to mm -hmm. us, right? Yes, so yep. the idea is now we are matching the courses based on their ability to take the course uh, and finish it and their interest level. So as a result, uh, most of the students were able to complete their degree program because the, the courses matched their uh, their interest levels. And also, in fact, they actually took 20% more courses than required by their degree completion criteria. Mm. Um, and this program was so successful that President Obama mentioned it in his speech multiple times and uh, Bill Gates also mentioned it in his speech and Bill Gates Foundation actually invested in the project. Oh, that is fantastic. I, I, yeah, I've never heard of it, sadly, but that's really amazing. So I, I get, you're absolutely right. You know, when you go to university, you have no idea about, you know, what you really want to do. And as you said, we get forced down a pathway that is actually the, uh, sometimes it's the parents who want you to be a, a lawyer, a doctor. You yeah, know yeah. this from being an Indian parents, I'm exactly, sure. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, or engineer. Uh, for mine, it was, you know, you should go and do a science degree, even though I love people and I love languages. They said, no, you should mm -hmm. go and do science. Mm -hmm. Science is a great yeah, thing yeah. to do. Yeah, um, yeah. I find in, in later on in life, a lot of people actually kind of struggle with, you know, what should I be doing and why should I be doing it? And um, I always say to people, you know, do the stuff that you really, really love and you're really good at and let go of the stuff that you're not so great at. But some people struggle with that. Um, do you see AI playing a part in actually helping people find their why? Yeah, absolutely. See, um, uh, AI is... Um, it opens up the possibility to ask uh, questions, um, questions that um, we may not be able to easily answer because uh, you can think of AI as being sort of a collective consciousness 
of the of the human race or mm-hmm. you can say uh, a super intelligent uh, being who has read all the books that are out there and you can you know you can uh, go and ask any question and say okay you know this is my history it's it's going back to the same example that uh, i was using for the students you can mm-hmm. just tell the uh, tell inform the ai that this is my life journey this is my history you know this is where i come from this is my background and these are some of the options that i am looking at you know wh- wh- what are your thoughts and uh, in order for a human to understand it it will take uh, you know uh, hours and hours of sort of getting getting to know you but with a super intelligent being it can actually look at your journey and it can actually start to give you very intelligent answers that you know maybe you should try this maybe you should try that and then the other uh, the next step is uh, we 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 can even get this kind of advice from other human beings but then we get stuck on okay you know what is my next step um, you know how do i get there so again ai can help you and it, it you can start to brainstorm with ai and say okay uh, you know what is my first step what could be the, my next step what is the easiest one thing i can do to you know uh, to uh, move forward in that direction so all of these things are um, accessible and easy now with ai and of course we are at a very beginning of what ai could be so um in 5 years time in 10 years time you can think of uh, ai being a highly personalized ai which is almost like your therapist uh, who knows you so well and is uh, accompanying you all the time and it can actually tell you you know you should eat this today if you want to be healthy you know you should uh, think about this career move or whatever so yeah. uh, so that's that's the realm we are going into now Yeah, and no, I actually heard some examples of that when I was doing a panel discussion the other day about um, a, a person who was training to do a cycle race and using AI to actually um, really up to, like make the the training program up to date to that minute, as opposed yeah, yeah. to in the past you'd make you might go to a trainer who would give you a program for six weeks yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you stuck at it. And at the end of six weeks, you'd then change it. Now they're able to make real time kind of adjustments yeah, yeah. based on what's going into your mouth, what exercise yeah. you've done, how well you've slept. Tell yeah, me a little bit about the meditation part of things because you said it can help with meditation. and it's it's something that i wouldn't say i don't have the time to do it's something i've struggled to do because my mind is always like working at a million miles an hour yeah, 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 how yeah. does how does ai help with that <laughs> see um first of all I'll, i'll i'll spend one minute on meditation see um mm-hmm. me- meditation is not about uh, getting rid of your thoughts meditation is about observing your thoughts so our mind is basically a conscious mind and subconscious mind uh everything that happens in our life is generally controlled by our subconscious mind so i will say uh, 90% of our life is controlled by our subconscious mind and only 10% is conscious um, so uh, generally we don't know why subconscious mind is doing something it's generally because of uh, no emotional responses that we experience based on our childhood based on our past past uh, background and all that Mm-hmm. and um and when you when you meditate uh, you basically are observing your thoughts and now you are separating uh, through that act you are separating your conscious mind and subconscious mind you can start to observe it now how does ai uh, how can ai help you is mm. let's say um you know you you um you have a certain vision for your life so let's say you want to become a very successful entrepreneur and um that vision is very blurry like it, you know if i just say i want to become a successful entrepreneur i don't exactly know what it means like how will how will that be but you can go to ai and say okay you know uh, write me a story uh, that uh, depicts in detail how will it feel to be a successful entrepreneur and write it in first person and write it in in the present tense you know or or, or even in the past tense and you can start to say you know um uh, i have 250 employees and you know my business is thriving and it can give you like very very fine detail you know um i'm driving a, a car worth uh, you know 100000 uh, it's uh, it got red color i was driving down the street blah 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 whatever now our conscious mind and even our subconscious mind is not imaginative enough to put in all the details and really understand that as the truth but if you ask ai to write a, a very detailed story and now you start to read it out loud to yourself it will actually make you experience the same meditative effect because now you are really uh, visualizing 
your future in great detail and when you start to do that over and over again and the the listeners can try it actually i i um, and let me know in 7 days how it feels because within 7 days you will start to feel something in your mind you will start to feel an upliftment you you'll start to feel some meditative effect and i will not be surprised if some of the things that you uh, have uh, read in that story they actually start to manifest yeah no that's absolutely true and i think this is really important i i know that there was a a time when the secret came out and people kind of went oh you know we can just we can make anything happen but they they sort of went down the track of okay i'm just going to wish there was a million dollars in my bank account and that's going to happen i think it is the level of detail and being able to be really focused that your subconscious can deliver what mm-hmm. you're trying to get to is really important yeah. so it's not it's not a miracle it's just actually if we are really clear about where we're headed and crystal yeah. clear laser sharp focused then yeah. the 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 world can start to deliver on what you want. Yeah. Fascinating. Um gosh, you know, it's really interesting because I think a lot of the stuff in 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 the media about AI is really around marketing and chat mm-hmm. GPT and um and but there is just so much that you can do with it outside of that, isn't it? But it must yeah, come yeah. down to knowing what you want to get out of it. Like how do you know what to put in so that you can get out what you need? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um when we work with businesses or clients, that's the first thing we ask them, okay? tell us what is your biggest challenge you know what are the what is the low hanging fruit where if we automate it if we you know uh, add ai it will save you tons of money it will make you a lot of money it will save you stress whatever that is and so then we say okay what kind of ai do we need here chat G- chat gpt is just one form of ai uh, you know there are multiple fields in ai computer vision being uh you know the computer can actually see what we see as human beings and that is applied in things like self driving cars or monitoring um monitoring uh, like uh, you know for security purposes or quality assurance in uh, in um, in uh, manufacturing units so uh, we actually use computer vision in a in a project where um we we um we created 3d models of of uh, human feet using computer vision and which is uh, you know uh, which help the 3d model actually helped us create a 3d printed orthotic device which helped uh, with joint pains right so um so I there are in the beginning i wanted about the joint pain thing okay yeah, that's how you did it yeah, awesome. yeah 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 so 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 uh, uh, the underlying uh, fact that we need to realize is that data is the raw ingredient for any type of ai or data analytics right so mm-hmm. once you have a, a decent amount of data then these algorithms can really figure out what is going on it can inform you and you can you know start to make adjustments in your business in your life uh, whatever that is uh, so um, so yeah i mean uh, 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 the misconception uh, that people have is that chat gpt is ai yes mm-hmm. that is a form of ai but there are other forms of ai and you can mix and match together to come up with a very compelling solution It was really interesting one of the panelists the other day actually talked about the fact that they built robots to go and pick fruit off of trees because they were having challenges around getting people um in from I think in from Mexico into America mm-hmm. to do this work or whatever it was and and so they actually developed you know technology that not only looks at the fruit sees if it's ripe can actually then pick it off the tree put it in just like a a human would do that's yeah, still yeah. AI it's just a different mm-hmm. form of AI yeah Exactly exactly yeah yeah So people worry that you know with all this because we we this AI is in, is um is just growing exponentially right in terms of what it can actually do people are kind of worried that oh what does this mean for for me for my job um business owners probably get a bit excited by it but then people are also going well then what if if AI takes over things where do we now sit how yeah, do yeah. you answer that Yeah see um, the thing is that um I'll answer it in uh, two parts one is that AI is not going to take your job a person who understands ai will take away your job right so uh, just like um, when the internet started you know a lot of people said uh, uh, oh uh, you know what is an email what's a website i don't need a website right but then yep. a few years later we cannot survive without an email we cannot survive without the internet so today mm-hmm. if you go to a job market if you apply for a job and say i don't know anything about computers i don't know how to use internet how far do you think you'll get right uh, so it's the same thing again where 
if you don't know how to use ai as 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 a as a tool to enhance your productivity somebody else is going to be more competitive than you and they will take away your job secondly uh, we all fear that you know we have attained certain life uh, uh, we have attained certain level of skill we have figured out some solution and now if ai can do it then people who used to pay us to, for that solution are not going to be able to pay us but if you flip it then we can say that we used to sell to people who did not know something that you know I, i'm not making a hierarchy of people but in terms of their knowledge about a particular topic we are above them but mm -hmm. if we use ai we can start to actually sell to people above us because now we know more uh, than our level of skill we all of a sudden if we use ai now we become more skillful and now i can sell to um, I mean, bigger clients. Maybe I can. I was selling to people uh, who are small business owners, and now I can go ahead and uh, talk to multinational corporations because I know more uh, with the help of AI. So um, we we just need to look at opportunities. There are there are going to be challenges, but uh, people who give in to that challenge and sort of get scared, um, they will have uh, uh, they will have some problems uh, as it happens. in every technological advancement but if people roll up their sleeves and they say okay you know i'm going to adopt this and i'm going to see how it can benefit me and others around me they will actually accelerate so much further ahead uh, especially right now because we are at the beginning stages right now so mm -hmm. um, uh, another good example is like in 1990s if you started a website you could literally become a millionaire overnight like people were throwing money at you um yeah. jeff bezos started a website amazon in 1997 and he became the richest person on the planet taking over walmart which is which has been around for 100 years right so that's the impact of technology so uh, i hope people um, uh, can get some insight from this and actually jump in and start embracing it uh, taking baby steps but but it is it is it is not something that is harmful it is actually that will you know help us find a lot of solutions to big problems much more quickly which is the important thing okay that's great um what about though so that they're going to be you know we, we've all seen the movies like ai where mm. the robots start to get cleverer than the humans and they start to want to take over the world or or yeah. they make decisions that maybe we don't think are the right decisions because they've done it based on a whole bunch of fact and we mm. do it based on intuition or or emotions yeah, um yeah. Do you, does will that day come do you think or is it going to be what how's it going to play out see um in my opinion you know this is unfounded fear like uh, first first thing is um people say what if it becomes self aware then i ask uh, people then how do you, how many human beings on this planet are self aware you know i i i think it's like less than 1% right so i tell them okay let's work on the humans first and then worry about the machines because the machine will only do what the humans can can ask it to do and so before uh, an algorithm that can help a machine become self aware we need to be self aware so that i can write an algorithm that that makes <laughs> yes. it right the other thing is that um there are millions of species on this planet right and there's only one species that wages organized war against each other and that is human beings so uh, once again that is because of jealousy that is because of you know um, all these negative emotions uh, emotional baggage that we carry as human beings uh, we 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 do these things so once again these uh, these emotions will need to be programmed or an algorithm will have to be created which makes ai jealous of another species or it makes it ambitious or it makes it uh, you know um, malicious and and these these are not i don't think an algorithm can encapsulate these type of emotions it, these things have to be um, you know embedded in your psyche from generations you know and that this is you know uh, after going through multiple generations of trauma it sort of bubbles up as as a as a you know uh, this ugly ugly manifestation as something like a war or something so it's so um, far fetched to think that ai um, will have multi generational trauma like that um, uh, cuz it's just like absurd to me knowing how humans behave and how uh, ai is is programmed 
Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting point. I didn't even consider it like that, but you're right. So, I mean, you're working in this day in, day out. And I guess, you know, some of the, the big companies, a lot of the, a lot of the AI stuff is being driven by the big companies and their needs. But how can a smaller, you know, small to mid-sized company start thinking about where I, AI can add value to their business? So, as I said, um, you know, uh, that's a great question. As I said, um, it's always... Every business has challenges. Every business every day has challenges. So I um, ask the, uh, the business owner, let's list down the biggest challenges that you have. You know, is it hiring new people? Is it your company culture? Is it your sales and revenue? Is it your profit margins? Is it security? Whatever that is, let's list that down and now start to work on what AI can do to solve that problem. It's it's always good to start backwards rather than saying, okay, where can I fit AI and make my, make my company, you know, sort of have this buzzword, oh, you know, we are using AI. Yeah. That doesn't work. So if you, if you focus on a problem, let's say, uh, you know, you want to build culture within your company and it's, 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 a, it's a negative culture, uh, uh, toxic culture. Now AI can start to help uh, you by uh, communicating better within your company, understanding people's sentiment, understanding what people are feeling inside, and why this toxic culture is being created. Uh, is it the is it a company wide problem? Is it a, is just a few people? So data can tell you all of these things. Right. It's not to really pinpoint things, can't it? So you can actually get exactly. there is the real, the real issue. And I exactly. suppose you can also use it on the converse side in terms of bringing in new people into the business. How exactly. do you make sure the person that says they're the right fit actually is the right fit? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Okay. No, it's really cool. I think it actually fits in quite nicely with the work that I do. So obviously, we work with businesses to bring an operating system into the business. And yeah. all we really do is we highlight the issues. And yeah. then we have to solve the issues. AI is going to be really important, actually helping solving those issues that the companies yeah. have. Exactly. I think it's exciting. Absolutely. I think it's yeah, really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, in terms of, you know, top tips, if you had to sort of say three things that somebody could walk away from listening to this and go, hey, what what can I do immediately that would make a difference? What would you say? So um, one thing, as I said earlier, like, you know, try this, um, go to chat GPT, um, write a story mm -hmm. about uh, something that you want uh, to happen in the future, maybe something small, even like, you know, let's say you want to take a vacation with your family or whatever, uh, write a story and read it out to your yourself uh, for a few days and see what happens and and uh, you know I'd, I'd love to know the impact of it because it's very interesting what um, what happens when people try it the second mm. thing is um, I'm doing it I'm writing it down it's definitely yeah, yeah. give it a go yeah. since I'm finished yeah <laughs> yeah uh, second thing um, I always tell people have um, have uh, uh, 20 new conversations with people so whether that's inside your company outside your company because the more conversations you have the more um, you know uh, insights you will get about your life, about your business, and this has nothing to do with AI, by the way. So this is just straight uh, business um, and uh, the human connection. So uh, the more you talk to, let's say, your employees, so at least twenty new uh, conversations with people you haven't touch base in or you know whatever that is and ask them hey how's life uh, what, what's happening in your life how how can i help you um and this will give you so much insight about what is happening uh, in the world around you right mm -hmm. the the third thing i will say is um just get better at storytelling because that's another trait uh, that a human mind uh, has evolved to remember stories. And if you want to make yourself memorable, uh, start telling better stories. We haven't we haven't been taught how to do that in in our uh, modern education system. But if you start to tell stories. Um, people will start to remember you more vividly uh, involuntarily because uh, when you tell a good story, uh, it reminds another person about their experience and now that story becomes uh, uh, you know memorable for them and uh, and whenever there's an opportunity for you to work together do some business together that story is going to link you up uh, together and uh, you know that that'll be beneficial for you 
I think that's absolutely brilliant. I've just, you just made me realise, I think the reason I love these podcasts so much is I actually get to speak to so many different people on a regular basis and it's always opening up my mind. You know, there's things I think I know about and then suddenly I go, actually, hadn't even considered that. And you're, you're right about the storytelling because when we read your your web page and, and that we the story that you've gone through, it automatically, it does, it gets stored away and, and you know that at some point I'll go, ah, oh, Manoj, that was the guy that I was talking to about X, Y, Z, you know, and that yeah. was his story. So yeah. brilliant. Okay, thank Thank you. Um, from an AI perspective, how you said, I, mean, I think you're absolutely right. This is not going to replace humans, but people who really jump on board and learn how to use it will be better equipped to deal with things in the future. Mm-hmm. Have you got a favorite kind of AI site or an AI newsletter? I don't know where you find this information, but do you have somewhere yeah. that you could recommend people go to where they can keep up to date with what's going on? See, um, in my opinion, uh, it's always, so right now it's a wild, wild west. There's a thousand tools coming out every day. So my, in my opinion, go with the granddaddy of all, ChatGPT. You know, just start using ChatGPT because that will open up the mind once you start to see the value, value of it. Uh, our mind automatically starts to create more um, connections, and uh, and here is here is the funny part. Like um, uh, you can start to ask these same questions to ChatGPT as well. It will actually mm-hmm. start to give you uh, because whatever questions we have in our mind, we can actually start to say, oh, you know, I can ask ChatGPT to answer that question. Now the caveat is that uh, if we ask, okay, which which newsletter to follow, it may not be able to give us the answer right now because it is. Um, I think it is uh, the the data it has is up to uh, October or September twenty. 20- 2021 2021 but oh, very soon okay. yeah yeah so but very soon they are uh, they are going to be at a place where they have up to date information and so uh, so any question that comes in your mind you can straight away say oh, okay you know i i know how to ask this question but that's another thing you need to get better at asking questions be very specific yeah. on how to ask these questions so you can get the better answer no, I think that's absolutely right. I actually sort of saw a live demonstration of somebody building a, 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 a spreadsheet on chat GPT. Yeah, so if you yeah. give it the right instructions, it can actually do the stuff for you. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. So I I was under the, the misconception that it was up to 2017. So it's actually up to 2021 now. Got it, but got it, it is still only a snapshot up to then. I think I believe the new version that is coming out of chat GPT is actually going to be pretty much live, isn't it? In yeah, terms yeah, exactly. Of it's scraping yeah. live, yeah. yeah. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, well, gosh, you know, it's such an interesting topic and I, I think it's really exciting exciting i think i think that particularly if we just remove it from just being about how do we say things better but actually how do we really solve our big challenges how do yeah. we use ai to to solve those those biggest challenges and, and take away some of the labor intensive stuff that's when it becomes really exciting exactly yeah. exactly yeah Oh, so if people want to find out more about you, where would they go to find that, Manish? Yeah. So if they want to connect with me, the, the, you can go to my connection sites so where all my social um, uh, connections are listed. It's Manuj, my first name, .ca uh, for Canada. So Manuj.ca or uh, my website is Manuj Agarwal, my full name, ManujAgarwal.com. Or you can find me on LinkedIn. That will be the best. And you can tell me that you heard me on this podcast and um, let me know how I can help. Now, that sounds absolutely wonderful. Now, in terms of working with people, what kind of people do you work with? Because I've seen some big names on the website, but what is your ideal kind of person that you like to work with? See, um, we don't focus on the size of the company. We focus on what is the mindset of the person. Um, if they are an innovator, if they are a risk taker, if they want to you know, uh, stay ahead on the bleeding edge of technology and they want to implement these technologies, uh, th- those are the kind of people we are looking for. Um, because even if you say we're working with uh, small companies, mid companies or uh, large companies, if they are uh, apprehensive about things like AI, if they don't want to, uh, they, they don't want to like you know do anything with it then it doesn't work but if they if they are interested in uh, pushing the envelope of the technology and what it can do for them then it's very exciting for us to work with them and see okay you know how we can transform their business yeah that's great hey look um, I know it's very late in the evening for you because I know we're, we're very very different time zones I want to thank you for actually taking the time this late in the evening and still being so so vibrant and alive and excited about AI I really appreciate that and thank you for sharing your insights I think that has just been absolutely fabulous I've got some notes here for myself uh, you know get that chat GPT to, to paint the picture for you that you can see where you're headed um, do have those more conversations with people get to understand people better um, and get better at storytelling I mean they're, they're just yeah. fabulous insights 
website. So yeah. thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you really so much for having it. me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.